In order to help people appreciate the value of these lagoons, the Castilla y León regional government created the Villa Fafila Visitor Center, in which members of the public are shown the importance of these ecosystems for the birds of Europe. Ignorance of this fact led to the drying out of most of Spanish wetlands in the 1970s because they were thought to be a source of malaria infection. This disease was wiped out, but Spain lost one of its greatest natural treasures forever. Villa Fafila was saved at the last moment when 70 hectares of wetlands had already been dried out. The center has a small adjoining lagoon. All year round, you can find examples here of all the main species that visit Villa Fafila. The most important of all these in terms of rarity is this barnacle goose. The barnacle goose breeds in Greenland and spends the winter along the coasts of the North Sea. The birds that visit these saltwater lagoons are 2,000 kilometers away from others of their species and more than 200 kilometers away from the nearest coast. There are many common species too, such as mallards, regular visitors to Spanish lagoons. These birds have the last feathers of one wing cut off so they cannot fly. They live in captivity. This means that at any time of the year, the visitors to the center can see the different species that inhabit the salt flats even when the wild flocks return to their winter breeding grounds. The wetlands have recovered after the summer and, with the water, have returned to life. The different birds that live here enjoy the last few days of summer heat before the arrival of the hard Castilian winter. In the coldest months, the temperature may fall to 14 degrees below zero, although even then, average temperatures are above zero. These conditions are bearable for both coots and the anatidae. In their homelands in the north of Europe, winter is so cold that the lagoons where they feed are permanently frozen and therefore inaccessible until spring. Of the varied fauna that visit Via Fafila every year, there are three species that deserve particular attention. The first only stops off, the second spends the winter and the third lives here permanently. One of them is reaching the lagoons before dawn. Their cries, which are necessary to keep them all together in the dark, tell us they are cranes. Their journey began in the Scandinavian peninsula at the end of August. After crossing the Baltic, they reached northern Germany, where they joined up with flocks from Finland and Russia. They stayed there for two or three weeks. Once they regained their strength, the group continued on its journey. They did not stop again until they reached the Iberian Peninsula. Of 
Of the 10,000 cranes that make this journey, about 1,000 make another stop within the peninsula. The lagoons of Yafafila have not yet recovered from the summer drought, but the pastures and farmlands that surround them provide the travelers with sufficient food. Seeds, bulbs, stems and small animals provide them with the energy they need to finish their journey. Cranes inhabited the Iberian Peninsula in the past and would still do so today if man had not dried out their breeding grounds and plowed them up. The last pair to breed in Spain was in 1951 in the La Janda Lagoon. Today, that lagoon has ceased to exist. After a few weeks rest at the end of autumn, the flocks fly off again. Their final destinations are the pastures of Extremadura and Andalusia, where they set up their winter residences.